Hey everybody, Mike back for video number two to talk about VRF Lite in NSXT 3.1. So in the last video, I let you guys down a little bit. I didn't do any implementation, no GUI. It was 100% PowerPoint. I'm not gonna let you guys down in this video. We're gonna get into the GUI. I'm gonna show you a little bit of design and kind of explain some of the components and the networking around VRF Lite. And then we will get into the actual demo and show you how I have it set up in my lab. So let's get to it. In the last video, I showed you guys this slide right here. I just wanna kind of recap. So we have this environment, we have tenant A, tenant B, and we've created a couple of T1s, a couple of segments. We have seg A, seg B, we've connected those to their respective T1s. All of that is just regular NSXT. And if you're not familiar with just plain old NSXT T1, T0, you should definitely go check out my NSXT from scratch series. It'll help you a lot when it comes to that topic. And then come back to this video and it will make a lot more sense. Now, moving on, I didn't say that said. Did you guys catch that? Well, I just did, but it wasn't easy. Anyway, moving on. Now, if we look at the edge cluster, we do have those t virtualized T0s, as I like to call them, which are just our VRF routers that are paired up to a parent T0, which in this case is this green box right here. Now, we're gonna focus in this video on this area right here, specifically what the interfaces look like from the parent T0 and what the interfaces look like from the VRF T0 as well. Now again, we're not gonna focus on this stuff on the right side of the screen because it's really pretty much just regular NSXT. I'll show you guys when we get into the actual demo, it'll make a lot of sense. There's nothing fancy to the right of the edge nodes when you're doing VRF Lite. Now moving on, let's look at for today what we're gonna focus on. So when you say I wanna deploy VRF Lite, the first thing before you do anything is you have to have a T0 that is configured and has interfaces on it. Now you don't actually have to run BGP on this T0 to anything. We will enable BGP and I'll explain that later, but we're not gonna actually set up BGP neighbors, for example, from this T0 over to router A or router B, but we do have to have these interfaces. So as I always do in all of my other videos, I have my edge set up with my T0 and it's sitting on edge cluster 01. And on that T0, I've got two interfaces in this case. I have a left interface and a right interface. And these are on different VLANs for redundancy, and I'm doing BGP peering over those in normal NSXT. Now, as I mentioned in VRF, we're not gonna do BGP over that T0, but I wanted to point out that really what you're looking at now is pretty much everything I do in all of my other videos, or at least this is the setup I do in all of my other videos. Now let's take a look at the VRF side of things. So let's say we implemented VRF Lite, we created a VRF in NSXT, we've got our T0, our parent T0, fully configured. In this case, I'm not displaying the interfaces just to keep things clean. But basically we, we set up this VRF, we call it blue-VRF, and now we've got, again, a left interface and a right interface from that blue VRF. Keep in mind, it's basically a T0, it's just virtualized. So just like a T0, we have to have interfaces, we give them a VLAN and an IP on whatever subnet is appropriate for that VLAN. In this case, we've got the 1025201 network for our left interface and then .202 for our right interface. So basically, if you look at this, we've got these interfaces on our VRF setup and we've got BGP configured from the blue VRF. Now going back a slide, you see I didn't have BGP configured here on the parent T0. I've got these interfaces, right? VLAN 21, VLAN 22 on the parent T0. Moving forward on the VRF, I also have left and right interfaces, but I've got VLAN 201 and VLAN 202. So they're completely separate VLANs, they're not overlapping, that's a key point to uh, point out here. And if we take another look at this, we have kind of the internal NSXT stuff. So what I mean by internal is I'm talking about things like our T1, we've got a segment here, I'm calling web-seg-blue, and we're gonna basically connect that up to the T1 just like we would a regular segment. We're gonna also have some web server VMs and those are straightforward. We basically go into vCenter, edit settings on the VM, and yes, we connect them up to the segment just like we would a regular port group. Nothing there is new. <sighs> that was a lot. So let's get into the hands-on stuff and I think it'll make a lot more sense once I start showing you guys how this looks. So here we are inside of my lab, and this is NSXT 3.1. I've got the dark mode enabled. I'm really fond of that dark mode, by the way. Now, we're gonna spend most of our time in this networking tab, specifically talking about those T0 gateways and also the T1 gateways as well, and then, of course, the segments that will connect to those. 
Now let's start with T0 gateways. In that previous slide, I had that green T0. That was what I called the parent T0. That is this one right here, Mike's dash T0. I'm not gonna do much here. I'll just show you kind of what I've got set up on this T0. If we go down to interfaces, we see I have two interfaces on this T0. Keep in mind, this is the parent T0. And I've got that left uplink and right uplink. And I've got them on the 21.2 network and 22.2 network. And then I've got those connected to a couple of VLAN segments, which again are just VLAN 21 and 22 for left and right. Nothing new there. If I close out of that, I'll show you the BGP configuration. This is a little different than what some of you might be used to. You have to enable BGP on the parent T0, but look here, I don't have any BGP neighbors configured. You don't actually have to do that. So basically you just have to enable BGP and you have to give it a local AS number. That sits at the parent T0 and that is inherited by the VRFs under it. So when we go to the VRF configuration, we can't set the AS there. Now moving on, let me go ahead and minimize that. Let's take a look at the VRF configuration. It'll look really familiar. So if I expand this, we see the first thing that's different is it says connect to T0 gateway mics dash T0. So I've connected it to that T0. And then if we look at the interfaces, again, same thing, let's go ahead and click that. We have again, a left interface and a right interface. Although here's the thing, look at this. The subnets are 1025.201.2 and 202.2 for left and right again, but clearly on different VLANs. Now, one of the key things about VRF Lite is the segments you connect them to should be a trunking segment. So in this case, I'm actually trunking multiple VLANs. This is just a VLAN segment that I've created in NSXT. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that out. And the last thing I'll show you here is the BGP configuration, which again, it shows local AS 100, but actually if I go, let's go edit this VRF. So if I go down here, you'll see I can't actually edit the local AS. I can't enable BGP. I could disable it and do static routing, that's fine. But I can't change that AS because it's inherited by that parent T0. And the same thing with the graceful restart timer and some of these timers here, that's all inherited by the parent T0. Now I still can do route aggregation and some route filtering, that's perfectly fine. I just can't do some of those timers and that sort of thing. Now if we look at the BGP neighbors, this is basically the same as you would do with a parent T0. I have my own neighbors here. I have 202.10 and 201.10. Now, technically, my parent T0 and my VRF T0 is actually peering with the same two routers. I'm just using BGP, and I have address families configured on the Cisco CSR1000V that is acting like my physical router. If you don't know what that means, you don't really have to stress it too much. Just give it to your network guys and let them figure it out. Now, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And let's go ahead, and the last thing I actually wanna show you here, so if I go to, let's see, I don't think it'll let me edit it right now. Yeah, so anyway, I was gonna show you here that basically we connect it to the tier zero. Once you connect it, it's connected. We can't really move it. But one of the other things that's inherited by the T0 is actually the HA mode. So you can't do active active on your parent T0 and active standby on your VRF T0. That can't happen. And the other thing is the edge cluster, wherever your T0, your parent T0 is sitting. So if it's in edge cluster 01, guess what? Your VRF tier zero has to sit in edge cluster 01 as well, which kind of makes sense if you think about it. So let me go ahead and close this out. And now let's take a look at the T1. So in this case, I have this test dash T1 and it's not connected to any tier zero gateway. So if I go edit it, all we have to do is select T0 gateway. Normally we would just see our tier zero here, Mike's dash T0. But you see I have this other option, which is blue dash VRF. Basically I just connect it to that just like I would a T0. Nothing else changes here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and I'll close that. That looks good. And finally we go to segments. So now let's say in this case we have that web dash seg dash blue. Same thing, we're not connected to any gateways here. Well, you pretty much guessed it. If I go edit that and we go down to here under gateway, you'll see here it gives me a couple of options. I have this T1 that I connected, which now is connected to the blue VRF, or I could connect it directly to the blue VRF, which you'll see here it actually says T0 gateway. So it's acting exactly like a T0. So in my case, I'll just go ahead and connect it here. It's not a big deal. I'm not gonna do much with it for now. And I'll hit save. That's it. That's, that's basically VRF Lite configuration for the most part. Uh, there are some other things you have to keep in mind, like route advertisement and that sort of thing. 
but that's really no different than regular NSXT. The last thing I'm gonna show you guys, which I actually neglected to show you, is how do you create a VRF? Well, you just go to your tier zero gateways, hit add gateway, and just hit VRF. And really the only setting, as I mentioned before, you're gonna to have to do is gonna be a name and your uh, associated tier zero gateway. And you can absolutely have multiple. So I could do, let's see, let's do red dash VRF and I'll connect that to Mike's T0. And you see, once I selected that, the HA mode populated. So if I remove that, I can't actually set the HA mode since it's inherited. So I click Mike's T0, it populates the edge cluster as well. That looks good. Hit save. That's it, I created another T or another VRF T0. Now the last thing I wanna show you guys is the security around this. So if I head over to the security tab and we look at gateway firewall, remember that gateway firewall in NSXT basically is a north-south firewall. This means in and out of NSX. So this is not your east-west micro segmentation or anything like that. This would be like maybe I wanna apply some blanket firewall rule to my entire NSXT environment. That's where I would do it. Now you'll see here, the first thing that pops open is gateway specific rules. So if I click that, I have the option to set rules on a per T1 or T0 basis or per VRF. So if I wanted to set rules only for the blue VRF, I could go there and I can start creating policies that would only apply to traffic in and out of this VRF. That's perfectly fine, no big deal there. I'm not really gonna focus on that too much. But what I wanted to show you is the all shared rules. Now this isn't really something specific to VRF light, but a lot of people don't know this. If you go to all shared rules, you have these categories for these firewall rules. So that screen I just showed you where I went to category specific rules, that was under local gateway. So those rules are processed right here and you can see the arrows kind of show you the order that they're processed in and it's from left to right. Now here's the cool thing. You'll see I have this emergency category and I went ahead and configured a policy here. I called it block telnet to tenants. I configured a rule, I said block all telnet from any source to any destination on telnet on the port 21. And then I... Port 23. Man, I just lost so much street cred with the network guys for forgetting the telnet port, sorry. So that said, I've got it set up to block TCP 23 telnet. And I'm applying that, here's the thing, I'm applying it to Mike's T0 and their blue VRF. And if I wanted to apply it to that new VRF we just configured, well, I can go in here, I could say red VRF, apply, and I could change the action to, of course, drop. At this point, I'm blocking all Telnet into my environment, regardless of what the configuration is like on that local gateway, which would be right here, AKA this tab right here. So it's just something interesting. This would really be useful for a multi-tenant environment so I can maintain control over what goes in and out of my environment and I could still give some control to the tenants. So that's all I have for you guys in this episode. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. That's the important one, subscribe. So you can get more videos like this and we can do more awesome stuff with NSXT 3.1 and beyond. Until next time, stay safe and healthy. Mike out.